And Tim, how good a fit is this for the Clippers? Oh, I think it's tremendous. I, I know that people are probably going to look at it and say, well, you now they've got a serious a surplus of, of point guards with Chauncey Billups in there and Mo Williams in there and now Chris Paul, but this is a different level guard right now. And I just think with, with the way he plays in the open floor, his ability to run pick and roll, make decisions, playing alongside Blake Griffin, and the fact that they can keep Eric Bledsoe, a very young, talented guard as well, didn't have to throw him into the deal. Uh, I think it's a great fit for the Clippers. I think the Hornets got an awful lot back. Getting Eric Gordon, you know, that, that guy I think is a future you know, all-star multiple times, uh, you know, eventually 23 20 to 25-point scorer in this league. So they got back a lot uh, for Chris Paul, and I think it was a fair trade for both sides. And it's obviously very exciting for the Clippers now. You get Blake Griffin first, uh, rookie of the year, most dynamic player coming into the league a long time a year ago, and now you add Chris Paul to the mix. You know, very exciting time uh, to be a Clippers fan. Is this a lot more of a benefit basically to the Hornets than the deal that was originally discussed, the one that David Stern squashed? Well, I mean, Chris Kane is a very good player, but I think you know the main attraction for him is his expiring contract. Uh, for Rico Mino, it's, it, we know it's, the upside's tremendous there, but we're not exactly sure what he's going to be. He's so young, a lot of potential. Eric Gordon, I just mentioned you know, how I feel about him. You get the pick. Uh, I still think that that first deal that was proposed where you end up with Lamar Odom, Luis Scola, Kevin Martin, and a first-round draft pick made you a more viable threat right now. I think the deal that went down – uh, with the Clippers makes the Hornets' future a little bit brighter probably than that deal, which which had some veteran players in it. Uh, this is more built around youth. So I think the future could be brighter, but I think if you wanted to win now, that first deal that was proposed that was voided by the commissioner was the best deal for the Hornets in terms of getting talent right now that can play. Tim, what are your thoughts on Griffin and Paul together? I mean, dynamic. You know, you think about the great combinations in this league. Uh, you know, that we've had in the past. And, and anytime you get a point guard that's that good with a dynamic power forward that's that athletic, I mean, you, know, you can just imagine what the open court's going to look like with that team. Chris Paul is such a great decision maker. Uh, he's going to be able to push the ball, push the tempo. Blake Griffin, one of his strengths is his ability to run the floor. And, you know, you can just imagine what that's going to look like finishing plays in the open floor. So it's tremendous, it's tremendous for the Clippers now. You know, it's an organization that's been so maligned and, and made fun of and the butt of jokes for years and years, and now you know, you're really building towards something. You've got two great young players uh, wearing Clippers uniforms next year, and now it becomes a matter of, you know, trying to see what they can do this year and, and being able to keep Chris Paul in the fold and, and hopefully getting him to sign an extension to where you can see him and Blake Griffin play together for a long time. Uh, but that remains to be seen right now. The immediate future, it's going to make things a lot more interesting in the Western Conference, seeing a team with, with two guys that are near the top of their positions, uh, at two very important positions playing together. So, And that's what I wanted to ask you. We asked Mark Stein where he ranked them, so where do you now rank the Clippers? And maybe the better question is, which L.A. team is better? Wow. Well, you know, I tell you, I'm a guy, I'm a big pecking order guy, so I'm still going to put the Lakers because of what they've accomplished and the fact that they've won together and all that experience uh, still ahead of them, even though they took a step back right now with no Lamar Odom. Now Chris Paul's out of the mix. Uh, I'm interested to see how much they amp up their ability or their, their desire, rather, to get Dwight Howard and see what, what they can do now because I don't think Kobe Bryant, that organization, want to stand pat and just lose Lamar Odom and go into the season like that. But right now, I put them ahead of the Clippers. But I think the Clippers right now, with those two guys and some of the young players they have, and with that three-guard rotation I mentioned, uh, that's a team, to me, that's a playoff team in the Western Conference without question.